Yeah, so my name is Jan. I'm talking about generating subtitles for Opencast using Whisper IA, uh, Open IA's Whisper. You heard a bit about it. So just a quick reminder, what is OpenAI Whisper? Whisper is a speech recognition model developed by OpenAI. I think I don't have to say much more about it. So Felix is telling us a little bit more about the motivation behind this. Why are we doing such um, subtitles with OpenAI Whisper? And um, all what's coming with it. Yeah. Yeah, we have kind of a special situation um, at our university. So we um, let's talk about it. For example, our lecture demand fast video provisioning. You may all know this. If there's a delay in video processing, you just get emailed. Uh, why does it, is the video not available? And um, our lecturers want to change their metadata after upload. I've made a typo and I just can't change it because the video is still processing. Um, yeah, and they also want to have transcripts without actually having to upload to Opencast. Um, there are also infrastructure constraints. We only have CPUs and we don't have an HPC for use for education. We have it only for research. Um, we only have a fixed amount of workers and we have rush hours and we have to consider pri uh, privacy policies and the data or no, the directory of data processing something uh, <laughs> <laughs> and updating such a thing may take up to two years. And yeah, um, we also have a problem that um, actually accessibility is not the primary concern yet in our university. So we actually can do a lot, but nobody says that's a priority. So now let's look at the Opencast world. We have that issue that you can't change ACL and metadata while active workflows are running on an event. And you can't do parallel processing of stuff in Opencast. You, it's all processed in a row. So, how a minimum viable product should look like. The events are not locked. Uh, there's no stalling. Um, we have a cap on, may have a cap on transcription capacity, but there should be no cap on video processing capacity, otherwise we will get email. Um, we should be GDPR compliant, um, and we should be able to run all this on existing hardware and we want to transcribe all of our incoming videos over the course of a semester continuously. So I told these are the constraints and Jan, here you have to, um, have to find a solution for this. Yeah, so my colleague Felix told me, hey, let's use some whisper to transcribe um, our videos from Opencast and uh, just imagine something how we can do it. So. Over here is a little interaction overview. I wrote two, pro two programs in the last two months. One is called uh, TS API. It's uh, the, the API that uh, gets called from the second program called SubOpenCast, while Translation API um, is uh, a Python program that calls Whisper. SubOpenCast is the program that um, gets the video lists uh, from OpenCast and decides uh, if it needs a uh, caption or if it already has one. So um, first thing, first things first, what do we need to work to Whisper? So first we need Python because Whisper's model is trained with, Tor with Torch and Torch is a model trainer with Python. Um, we need suitable hardware because as we heard, um, GPUs are very fast, but if you have a slow CPU, it can take a while to uh, generate the subtitles, so we need suitable hardware. Also, we need a program around Python uh, with the interface. That's the Transcreation API. Because um, to make a simple point, these are the three lines that are needed to um, transcribe a video with Whisper in Python. That's all. So um, the only thing we need is something around it, so we can just um, push videos to um, Whisper 
and um, don't think about the hardware and how it performs. So if we send, like, let's say, five or six videos to one CPU worker, it will literally crash and uh, won't respond. So um, the Translation API um, is the first program I um, worked on. So it transcribes given videos, all links. So you can send a post request to it and send a link, optional with username and password if it's a um, um, protected link. And it gets the video from there or you directly send the video file to the transcription API. Um, it provides all of it via a REST API design. Um, it's individually applic applicable, so uh, it doesn't need OpenCast or anything else to work. Um, that said, it needs no internet connection if you don't want to send links to it. If you want to send links to it, it needs a connection to the server you're requesting. But uh, if you only want to transcribe a video you send to it, um, there is no necessary for uh, internet connection. It can work completely offline, and it's also easy, uh, easy to deploy it via Docker. So um, if you have multiple workers, you can deploy it on each of them. So um, you can use multiple instances uh, to transcribe faster or more videos at one time. So um, this is a little overview about how the program internally works. Um, first, we have a Flask app that is handling the requests, which um, gives it to an object named Transcription API, um, which handles um, everything behind it. So um, if a user wants a video to be transcribed, it sends a REST post to Flask, which uh, then gives it to the Transcription API, which, trans uh, which generates a so-called transcriber object, which stores everything uh, the program needs to know, like what video is it or what link is it. It uh, got an ID um, and um, the user gets back the ID and not the transcription directly. So um, we got a little queue, it's a priority queue, so, so you can uh, prioritize the videos you want to transcribe. Um, after the queue, or the uh, transcriber object gets dequeued, um, Whisper is started and you can um, configure how many Whisper instances run multiply parallel. So let's say on my PC here, two instances of Whisper and the CPU is on at 100% capacity. Um, after the transcriber object whispered all of it, it just stores um, it via a JSON object um, in the database and the audio or video file that was sent before or is downloaded via the link gets deleted so the storage won't get messy and everything that the transcription API needs to work and resend the, for example, VDT file is in those one JSON file. Yeah, so um, you don't even need to um, say, hey, I need a VTT file or SRT file. That's everything um, you send with a GET request to the uh, transcription API and you say, hey, I need a TXT, a JSON or everything else that Whisper can imaginably return. So we got a program around the Python Whisper interface and now we need a program that communicates between OpenCast and that transcription API. Let's call it sub-OpenCast. Sub-OpenCast, or long-term subtitling OpenCast, uh, calls the OpenCast and transcription API. It searches for videos without subtitles in a specific time period, so you can, let's say, um, only search in the last year, let's say 365 days, or in the last half year. Um, it checks the load of Transcration API. Uh, there is an endpoint that returns the statue of it, like let's say how much RAM is used, how um, at which capacity it's running its CPU or GPU, and um, how much uh, jobs are running, how long is the queue, and depending on this information, it decides now I can send a video to it or not. It uh, periodically checks the statue of the transcription. So uh, if a video returns with a VTT file or as whispered, then it uh, receives the VTT file and automatically sends it back to OpenCast and they're starting a workflow. 
Sub-Opencast is a build little bit um, less complicated. It just gets a get job where it gets the video list from Opencast. It gets a gen send job where it sends the um, video to the transcription API and the return job which periodically checks if the um, video is transcribed. So let's get back to our interaction overview. Here we can see that um, sub Opencast periodically requests the video list from Opencast, which uh, returns a video list, but only with the URL of the video and not the video itself. This, this list gets filtered and um, the video link gets sent to the transcription API with a uh, username and password for the Opencast API. The transcription API then goes to Opencast, requests the video, and Opencast returns it. So the transcription API can do its work. And after sub Opencast periodically checks the status of the stored uh, ID from the transcription API, if a um, video got whispered, it can return the VDT to Opencast and there start a workflow. So everything is 100% automatic and you don't need anything to um, yeah, do. It can also um, subtitle an archive, like let's say the last year, the last two years. And um, my question for you would be, what are your suggestions or possible improvements or would you use it? Yeah, so that's what I've done the last two months and thanks for listening. <laughs>